Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for October 29th, 2020, recorded around 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. While well, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have a couple of very important things that are ongoing right now. Uh, first and foremost, the remnants of once what was Hurricane Zeta that made landfall yesterday in southeastern Louisiana that tore through portions of the southeast and northeast United States is now sitting out here across portions of New Jersey in the Delvmar. And this will be rapidly moving towards the northeast for the remainder of the day then out across the open Atlantic within the next couple of hours and then no longer poses a significant concern to land. Uh, but there will be a lot of heavy rainfall, uh, gusty winds that could exceed tropical storm force from time to time, especially across portions of the north and east, really from the Delmar Peninsula in New Jersey southward. Uh, to portions of North Folk, Virginia, etc., could see the effects uh, of some pretty significant uh, wind uh, as this blows on by. And then we also have this upper level disturbance that is now kind of mixing here with uh, the remnants of Zeta, and this will also be, be bringing some inclement weather towards the Northeast, including some snow across portions of the Northeast uh, later into today and tomorrow. So this will be something to watch going forward. And then we also have a very big tropical wave right now. Really, the axis of the wave extends near Barbados and the Lesser Antilles right now. But there is a whole swath of convection all the way into the southwest or basically into the southeastern Atlantic, uh, well to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands, which is located right here. And this tropical wave uh, has a 60% chance of developing as it moves westward into the tropical uh, Caribbean over the next couple of days or so. Now, taking a closer in zoomed look at the remnants of what is now the post-tropical remnants of tropical storm Zeta, uh, we can see that we have the swirl located right over here, probably somewhere over Virginia right now. And this will be scooting rapidly towards the north and east later, uh, moving off the coastline within probably the next two to three hours or so. Uh, and then again, you can see all of this cold air behind it. This is the upper level disturbance that was mixing with uh, portions of uh, Zeta to make it post tropical. This upper level disturbance is now going to be kicking towards the north and east as well rapidly and bringing some rather inclement weather again towards the north and east. So kind of a one two punch here, but all this cold air extends all the way southward. Uh, really into portions of Alabama and Georgia, some much cooler air definitely. And it certainly does feel better than it did yesterday. Now we can see here, as of 8 o'clock this morning, uh, the tropical storm force wind probability here. This is a probability map based on the one-minute average of uh, winds that are greater, really, than 39 to 40 miles per hour. And we can see that this remains near 90 to 100% for portions of South Carolina and all the way up basically into the North Atlantic here. But again, uh, really south of New Jersey and in through portions of the Delphmar, Virginia, North Carolina, uh, upstate South Carolina, this is going to be your biggest chance of seeing uh, stronger tropical storm force winds. So that's going to be one thing to really uh, have to see if that does materialize. So if there is any reports that you guys have, make sure to send them to me. And uh, you can always tweet me at micromally one and I'll be sure to uh, look at those. So looking at the 850 millibar relative vorticity product, this is really the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, we can see that our storm has lost its definitive standalone vorticity bit. Uh, what I mean is that you can see we have this vorticity associated here. This was as of about 15 Zulu time. So this was a couple of hours ago, but that vorticity bit is centered really right over portions of uh, North Carolina and Southern Virginia. And again, this is scooting rapidly towards the north and east, but you can see that all of this other bits of vorticity that is stretched in through here is now merging with the remnants of Zeta. And that has promoted this to turn trop uh, post-tropical because it's lost uh, its warm core characteristics, although uh, you know, obviously it's still producing tropical storm force winds. It is not classified as a tropical storm uh, anymore. So that's certainly something to be wary of. Now, 
Moving forward in time here, getting away from Zeta because most of the impacts from Zeta are almost over uh, in terms of the United States impacts, we turn our attention down towards a tropical wave in and near the Caribbean right now. It's moving uh, through the Lesser Antilles right now, north of Trinidad and Tobago, and this will be gradually moving westward over the next couple of days and then eventually find a sweet spot down here in the southeastern Caribbean where development chances seem probable at 60% right now over the next five-day period. Now, if we look out here on the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar relative vorticity product. Again, the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And really, we can see here a couple of very important things. First of all, you obviously note here the vorticity with Zeta, uh, the trough that's digging in right now across the United States. And then here's our vorticity bit. Very disorganized right now and anemic, but we do have convection down there that is trying to focus around a common axis, it does so appear. And we'll look at that here in a moment. Uh, but we can see the GFS forecast really doesn't spin this up really until late Sunday into early Monday. This is 12Z Monday, so 96 hours from now, we see that on the GFS forecast, we do have what seems to be a closed off uh, circulation here moving generally westward. And again, uh, this is going to be in a competing steering flow environment. We have a very strong trough towards the north but we have a building ridge to kind of the northwest. So towards the northeast of the storm, we have a strong trough. Towards the northwest, we have a strong ridge setting up. And we also have a ridge right now combined with the trade winds carrying the storm generally towards the west and then bending back towards the west-southwest. So you can kind of see that the trade wind is trying to push a storm, any storm that develops more into Central America. And on the GFS forecast, this is... Uh, by day five, we can see that the vorticity now starts to come really together here. But you notice where it's going to ultimately track into South, uh, South Central America here. And that's because the trade winds is bending all of this back here. And we also have a very strong ridge building back in to the east. And we also have a very strong ridge building towards the northwest. So we have a very strong ridge. And this trough is now starting to exit out. And it's moving generally towards the north and west. So we have a competing steering flow environment at the moment, and that's one of the things that's really going to be hampering uh, what we really know for this over the next couple of days. Now, if we look here at the GFS 200 millibar wind, this is up at the tops of the atmosphere, and what, what we're really looking for is any anticyclonic flow. And we can see that uh, really start developing here at day five. We get a general anticyclonic flow across most of the southeastern Caribbean. And we can see strong wind shear towards the north right now and relatively strong shear on the back side of this uh, upper level anticyclone to the southeast. So the storm has found its sweet spot and it's trying to organize down and through here. And we can see that even uh, through day five in, into day six, we can see that upper level anticyclone persists and the storm generates its own outflow and is able to intensify pretty well down here uh, closer towards the coast here of Central America. Now, again, this is very important because if there's any land interaction too soon, the storm may not get strong enough. But also, I caution, a stronger storm is always likely to go further northward. And given that this would be, at this time, particularly 987 millibars, according to the GFS, if it was to be taken literally, this would be a strong enough storm that it would start to feel more of a tug towards the north. Now, we can see that on the GFS 500 millibar uh, geopotential height and the, 850, in the uh, 500 millibar vorticity, here's what we're looking at right now. For the very subnopic setup, we have a strong ridge setting up right now across and just east of Florida. And this was what was helping to generate that northwesterly flow for Zeta that made that turn uh, yesterday made landfall as it was rounding that ridge. Uh, now we can see if we move forward with time, this ridge starts to abate and it slides further west or sorry, excuse me, further eastward with time. At the same time, we also have another ridge developing right now over portions of the Gulf of Mexico. It's very shallow, uh, but we can see that ridge really start to build in, but we get a very, very, very well-defined trough that digs in across Florida and the Northeast and this very big trough is very potent in the atmosphere. So at this time, a storm is more than likely to feel that tug towards the north. 
However, this is in the upper levels. Keep that in mind. Now, if again, if the storm is weaker in through here, the low level flow is still generally out of the west and, and eventually bending southwest. So the general storm motion is still going to be generally west or southwest. And we can see that even with time, what happens by about day five into day six, a big uh, ridge censored right now over southeast Texas and into the Gulf of Mexico, a big upper level low or a big ridge here, uh, upper level low here in trough. And then we have a general a weak low pressure or weak high pressure right now uh, over the central, uh, really over the central Atlantic. So naturally, there's a weakness right in through here for a storm to go. There's a pretty big weakness, but right now the GFS is contending on forcing this due into Central America. Now let's compare this to a model like the Euro, where the Euro is further north initially. We can see that the Euro is much further north. It comes further north and is well developed at a quicker time. This is developed here on Sunday instead of early Monday. It really actually develops probably as early as tomorrow uh, or into Sunday, really, Saturday into Sunday. And then um, by Monday, this is a what would more than likely be a bona fide tropical storm uh, at that particular time. So again, you have a bona fide tropical you know, depression or storm here, generally moving towards uh, the north or towards the southwest at this time. And we can see again, main steering flow, big ridge towards the north here, trough out here. So at least the GFS and the Euro are sort of agreeing that this general flow would be most uh, kind of probable for the storm. So again, a storm motion right now, probably into the southwestern Caribbean and then probably crossing near or over into Central America is likely at this time. And again, uh, that seems to be the most probable. However, if we look here at the GFS ensembles, this is the mean sea level pressure off of the 12Z uh, GFS. So we'll run this forward here. And this is, we're going to look here at 96 hours. And there's a lot of different things here at 96 hours. First of all, we can see where the greatest concentration is down here across where the operational GFS had it at 96 hours from now. But there is a general axis from it being just to the uh, generally towards the west and northwest of Jamaica towards all the way down here uh, towards Central America and Venezuela. Now, if we look here at day five, there is a very high concentration near where the GFS operational model has it. But if we start looking beyond that time, uh, this is closing in on day seven, we start to get a uh, kind of a bigger picture here and a broader potential for things to happen because we can see that on one sense, most of the guidance is here suggesting a storm here, but there's also guidance suggesting a storm that could be here. So models are diverging on that, and we can see these two separate areas, uh, one that has a storm here and one that has a storm closer to Jamaica. So these are two kind of factors right now that are playing in the role. And again, we saw this even with the uh, EPS uh, op or the EPS ensembles that were generally taking a storm uh, more on a northerly track instead of into Central America. We'll see if that still remains the case later today, uh, but that is certainly something to kind of take a note here. Now, if we look at the closer invisible satellite loop here, we'll actually go to more of a wider perspective for a second. We can see that the storm has been generating some convection right now near Barbados and the Lesser Antilles. And this is one area to watch. If it's going to focus any uh, circulation and convection, it may be here on the southern side. And one other very important thing here is what part really does become the tropical cyclone is going to matter. Is it in reality this northern part that tries to consolidate or is the southern part the one that really becomes dominant and consolidates? This is going to play a very big factor in where the storm is going to go uh, you know, six to seven days from now, or even in the short term, you know, three to five days. Uh, so we're going to be having to monitor this very carefully because, again, there is always that potential. Again, this time of the year, typically we get storms that move out of the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico or across Cuba and then out across the southwestern Atlantic. But it's not entirely impossible that we see a storm that generally moves into Central America. But the one thing that I will show here real quick is the 500 millibar height anomalies here. Uh, off the GFS, 
have been trending generally towards a storm that is further north. We can see the last couple of runs here uh, started out. This is the really the run from yesterday at 2 p.m. yesterday. We had a storm that was positioned down here, uh, closing in on South Central America. And now today, as we look here towards 2 a.m. this morning, a storm closer further north here along the coastline. And then 12Z today, we can see that the storm has trended once again further northward at about 132 hours from now. Even in the short term at day five, we can see that trend continues to generally be further towards the north. Again, a ridge building in over top, but a very strong trough over here. And uh, if anything, uh, the way that 2020 has been is we've had a very strong southwestern Atlantic ridge, but that will help to amplify this trough a little bit more. So this might have a chance to sneak its way further northward. And again, after that, it remains to be seen what's eventually going to happen. All right. So with that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley, and I will talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.